Hello, I'm Gary Whitehead, Power Project Specialist for Electrical Builders Incorporated. Today we're going to talk about isolated phase bus inspection and maintenance and the best practices that we use on that. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, electricity consumption is expected to increase nearly 30% by the year 2040. Is your plant prepared to handle this? Your isophase goes between the generator and your step-up transformer. It's the only thing that carries the current. It has no redundancy and there's no quick fix if you have a problem. This is a basic isolated phase bus system. You've got a small hydro generator there on the right. Your main bus comes up off of the generator and it goes all the way across to your step-up transformer. It also has tap buses down to the PT cubicles and your auxiliary transformer. An isolated phase bus system consists of those items. It also consists of all the auxiliary taps that goes to the different exciter transformers, the SCR auxiliary transformers, and your metering equipment at your PT cubicles. This is a larger isolated phase bus system. It's just showing the bus where it goes out to the transformer. You've got a main GSU sitting in the middle with auxiliary transformers that tap off and are sitting on each side. On some larger IPB systems, you have a cooling unit that blows cool air through the enclosure that cools the conductor down. The conductor can only go up to 105 C as far as temperature is concerned. If you can cool the conductor down, it can carry more current. One other thing that really needs to be noted is that the terminations at all the plant equipment, including your generator, all the transformers, including the GSU transformer, are part of the IPB system, and they are a responsibility of the generating plant. ANSI 3723 is the standard that covers all your isolated phase bus and actually it covers all your non-seg bus also. They will tell you what the ratings of the bus are, the design limits, the testing that has to be done on the bus, all the construction standards, and it also gives you requirements for unusual service. It also gives you a guide for calculating the losses inside the isolated phase bus when you specify the bus in a new system. This is a typical isolated phase bus system. It consists of an aluminum enclosure with an aluminum conductor. It's mounted in there with a wet rated high creep insulator. They can actually have moisture in the bus and it will not flash over. This uh, assembly is set on support steel and it actually uses air as a gap in there for the insulation and that gap is set per the BIL level requirements. Basically you have two different types of isolated phase bus designs. The original design is what we call a non-continuous IPB. They come up with a new design which is a continuous IPB because of the induced currents that are emitted by the non-continuous IPB design. A non-continuous IPB uses either one phase of the enclosure or a grounding bar as the system ground. The longitudinal sections of the enclosure are isolated from the next section. Then all three of the sections are grounded across to the phase of the, the ground bar. This design has large amounts of induced currents that affect the adjacent phase and also it affects the nearby steel. The continuous IPB has shorting plates at every end of the bus, at the generator, the GSU, all the auxiliary transformers, the PT cubicle, any tap that comes off of it, it has a shorting plate that bonds the enclosures together. This causes the induced currents to turn around and go back in a different direction. What this does, it basically eliminates 95% of all your induced currents that are in the enclosure at this time. This is a picture of a normal non-continuous IPB. One way you can tell that this is non-continuous is the shorting rings 
that are mounted on the steel, either under or over the isolated phase bus. Those shielding rings absorb all of the induced current. It protects the steel. It keeps the steel from actually absorbing the induced current. Those rings are made out of either aluminum or copper. And this is a positive indication that the bus is non-continuous. This is a large continuous IPB system. Everything is welded on the enclosures from one end to the other. Even where you have a generator breaker, the generator breaker itself is actually, the housing is actually made out of aluminum and it is continuous all the way through those also. What causes IPB failure? We can break this down into three basic groups. The first one is failures due to other connected equipment, such as your generator or a transformer or a PT cubicle. The second one is inadequate design that is inherent in pretty much every isolated phase bus designed by all the OEMs. They have weak spots in their designs. And then the third one is improper inspection and maintenance. We have found out that pretty much 50% of all the IPB failures fall under the third category of improper inspection and maintenance. Failures due to other connected equipment. With something like this, in most cases, you can't tell whether it was the transformer that actually caused the fault or the IPB where it's connected to the transformer that causes the fault. As you can see here, this is a transformer where one of the dog houses is actually gone. Part of the IPB is actually gone. And with this, those pieces actually melted in two one hundredths of a second. When I was at this plant, you could actually see up against the side of a metal building about 200 feet away where the liquid aluminum splattered against the building. Under inadequate design, we have three of the common things that we see is inadequate access for maintenance. What happens here is the OEMs do not provide places where you can get inside the bus to clean it. They don't give you a removable cover where you need them to get in there. A lot of times you will have no access to where the seal off bushings are, or you may have access to one side, but not the other. This is what happened at this plant. You had two phases that came through a wall and where they couldn't get in and clean the seal off bushings where they went through the wall, the plant personnel actually put fire stop foam around that and sealed that part of it up. That caused tracking on the inside. And then you have the damage here. On this failure, it actually went on for seven seconds before it, it shut the generator giant. One of the bus manufacturers uses sliding covers as an expansion joint. For this, you have to have a method to carry the enclosure ground currents from one side of it to the other, and they use cables. It's about 200 cables that jump from one side to the other. The problem is the cable with the best connection will carry the most current. It has the lowest, lowest resistance. And if you look at this with an IR scan, you'll notice that the cable that has the best connection also gets hot. It will eventually burn up, which then it carries all the current that it was carrying to the next best connection. That one will get hot and it will burn up. You have a cascading effect, then you start losing a majority of the cables and it keeps getting quicker and quicker. And you can actually lose the entire grounding system on your bus once you lose enough of the cables. We also have a bus manufacturer that uses a lot of the support insulators inside the bus and they will actually turn their design upside down when they go inside of a building. 
where the support insulator is supporting the conductor from underneath the conductor outside because it's sitting on steel outside that's underneath the bus. The steel on the inside of the plant is above the bus, so they just turn the entire assembly upside down. So then you have a conductor that's hanging from the insulator. Under normal situations, that's really not a problem, but this bus vibrates. Anything you hear hum in a power plant, you have vibration. And after about 20 years of vibrating, this is what happens. The ceramic inserts inside the insulator will actually come apart. Normally you have two insulators per section of bus, and then you have laminated flexes that attach the conductor to the next section of bus. So if you lose two on the same section of bus, the conductor falls down into the bottom of the enclosure and you have a rather large failure at this point. The major problem we run into is improper inspection and maintenance. A lot of plants do not have an adequate schedule for the inspection and maintenance. A lot of times they don't use the proper procedures during the inspection and maintenance. And then also they have untrained electricians or inexperienced contractors that will do the inspection and maintenance. You can have a good journeyman electrician, but if he does not work on isolated phase bus continuously, he would not know a problem if he was holding it in his hand looking at it. This is actually looking into a seal off bushing at a lead compartment at the generator. They could actually get inside and clean this seal off bushing off, but the back side of the seal off bushing was not accessible. So this is what happened. You notice the inspection cover that you can get into the insulator past where the failure was at. That gives you an access point to that insulator, but it does not give you access back to the seal off bushing back next to the line compartment. This is what happens when one of those insulators come apart, when two of them come apart on the same phase. You notice the shock wave that went through the entire room. This is where a PT cubicle blew apart. This is another thing where the safety aspect comes into this. Notice the double doors, the steel doors that's bent in two. Someone walked through this less than a minute before this thing blew up. This is showing a seal off bushing that's had a failure where it blew the bushing apart. Notice all the residue on this, this that's the carbon and ionization where a failure happens. Another big problem we have is using incorrect hardware on the bus connections. This picture shows damage from using split lot washers or, you, or from using locking nuts. What happens is the steel bolt will not expand as much as your aluminum conductor. Therefore, something has to give, and it's pretty much always the conductor. It will mash the, the flat washers up into the conductor itself. Plus, also, you have something that's called material creep to where the conductor itself will be flattened out and spread out and will actually crack. A lot of times the people at the plants will take an attitude toward isolated phase bus that it has no moving parts. It'll last forever. It will until it blows up. A lot of times when you look at your bus with an infrared camera, you will see hot spots like this one here. This one probably has connection problems on the bolted covers that are shown there where you see the heat. It's not allowing the ground currents to pass the way they should. This slide actually shows the paint peeling on the shorting plates. This is a good indication that you have excessive heating in this area. If you lose your ground on a continuous system, you can actually set up something inside with a cathodic action and with a little bit of moisture, and it will eat this conductor, the aluminum conductor, up in a matter of months. That's all it took for this to corrode 
uh, that you see here. This is the same IPv system, it's just a different phase. The OEMs will recommend that you have a regular scheduled maintenance program at every major outage. What EBI recommends is that this maintenance program goes full circle. You start off with an online system diagnostic like an EMI test. An EMI test will tell you the problems that you're having in your system. It will identify them and it can actually pinpoint the areas that you're having your problems at. You can do a high pot test and the high pot test will tell you if you have a cracked insulator. With an EMI test, it will tell you pretty much within a few feet of where that insulator is at. That way you don't have to look through 150 insulators in a bus system until you find the, wrong, the one that is actually cracked. Then you have the offline inspection where you go into the bus and you inspect all the components. You spec inspect all the terminations to see if you have any problems there with the silver plating or any of the hardware that's used. Then you need to clean the bus. Then you need to go in and repair or refurbish everything that you find during the offline inspection. Then you need to have a vinyl verification, which would be a high pot test, before you go back online. Then you come back around and you can do an EMI test again, and you have a baseline from the first one to know the progress you made during the actual inspection. When you go into an outage to do your inspection and maintenance, you need to plan for this. You need to get all your information together from your O&M manual. Sometimes it's rather hard to find that information at the plants, but you need the current drawings, the bill of materials, pictures, anything else that you have that concerns the bus system. You need to review all of this information and determine a specific scope of work. Then you need to determine what standard replacement parts you need to to make sure that you have before the outage. Determine what kind of equipment or scaffolding will be required. Then you need to determine what special parts or materials may be required upon discovery. And you need to have a contingency plan in case you have problems like that come up. EBI was established in 1974. We have successfully completed over 3,300 jobs in North America. We have never had a warranty claim. We specialize in the isolated phase bus and non-seg bus services, maintenance and complete in-house refurbishment and repair. We're the only isolated phase bus contractor to be ISO 9001 quality certified. We will repair and refurbish bus from all the major OEMs both current and obsolete. 100% of the clients who have relied on EBI for isophase inspection and maintenance have avoided a forced outage from their IPB. We are the trusted turnkey bus duct service provider of choice for major utilities across North America. If you have any questions, please go to our Contact Us page on our website. You can also receive a free preliminary assessment of your isolated phase bus system by downloading our free IPB assessment tool.